In this video, we're going to be hacking Steel Mountain on Try Hack Me. It's part of the Offensive Security Learning Pipeline. And it's actually the first time in this channel that we're diving into the advanced exploitation section. All of that right now. So, of course, the very first thing that we're going to want to do is launch our Nmap scan. So, what I'm going to go ahead and do is do sudo Nmap. I'm going to do sin stealth. I'll run some scripts and scan for versions. I'll go ahead and get this IP address in, and I want to make sure that I output it to a folder. And just like that, here we go. We got all of our results. So make sure that you really look through all these uh, this output whenever you're running these scans. Uh, you're gonna num you want to notice all the different services that they have running. Uh, of course, we got. Port 80 running an HTTP server. We're going to take a look at that here in a moment. That'll answer question number one. Uh, we got several other services that don't really, uh, you know, we're not really looking at them quite as closely. Uh, port 8080, that's running another HTTP server. So we're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. But first, let's check out the port 80 server. And we got employee of the month. Who recognizes him from Mr. Robot? If you recognize him in his name, wow, what a memory you got. Uh, but here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dive through the inspect element and the source and we see that it is Bill Harper uh, .png, so that's his name, Bill Harper. If you watch Mr. Robot, let's just pour one out for him. Poor guy. Just he did not deserve what happened to him. And of course we see 8080s running the other uh, web server, so let's go ahead and jump over here to port 8080. And we see that it is running an HTTP, HTTP file server. Let's click on that. What is that? And we get more information. It is a Regetto file server. Okay, so let's go ahead and just look around here. Uh, so we can just go ahead and type Regetto file server. Excuse me, Regetto HTTP file server. And then let's go ahead and look for vulnerabilities that exist for that. So let's go search exploit Regetto. That'll give us, uh, basically, if you're wanting to do this without Nmap, you're going to want to search uh, search exploit. And it'll give you basically the path to what you would use to attack this machine without Metasploit. Now, in this video, we will be attacking it with Metasploit. Uh, but I want to include this just for you guys. So we got two here uh, that you might want to... And, you know, look into, we got a text document, it'll tell you a little bit about the exploit itself. And then we got a Python uh, script, and that is what you are going to use to get your reverse shell. And so let's go ahead and just kind of look at the output, or let's look at what's inside of these. Super cool, we got them copied over into our uh, folder here. And let's look at what we got here. So we got the CVE listed right there when it was made. We got what kind of uh, device it was tested on and then how you can use it. Now this one, meh, you know, we're not really really gonna be touching this one. The Python script, this one, is what you're really gonna wanna spend some time in. Um, this is the one that will give you the reverse shell on the Regetto file server. So make sure that you kinda know what's going on. Uh, you see the IP address and the local port. You're gonna wanna switch those with yours. So with that, what we're going to want to do to answer this next question is check out exploit DB. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and type in Regetto and we're going to see remote command execution for Metasploit and that is what we want. So we're going to click on that and we're going to see the CVE listed up, up top. So we're going to copy this and we're going to paste it into try hack me. And that is it. So the next thing that we need to do, enough quiz work, we're gonna put uh, you know, the pedal to the metal and we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a shell and we're gonna start trying to capture some flags here. So we're gonna boot up Metasploit. We're gonna go ahead and search for this CVE. And of course, there we go. There's the CVE, so we'll say use zero. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and split out our options. We're gonna wanna change the R host, R port, the L host, uh, and maybe one other thing. But we'll take a look here. So we're gonna set the R host to our try hack me target, the port to 8080 because it is not on the standard HTTP 
uh, port. It is on a different one, port 8080. And so, and then we also want to go ahead and set our L host to our TryHackMe VPN IP, uh, and not our actual private network IP. And I think that that is all we need. So let's double check that all those settings were set. Let's go and run this bad boy. And it might take a second to go ahead and run. It's uh, doing its work. It is handling its business. And sure enough, we're going to have ourselves an interpreter session. <laughs> yes. So with that, let's go ahead and check out who am I. And that, let's, uh, you know, obviously use the correct commands, unlike what I was doing here. Unbelievable. I should be slapped across the mouth. Uh, so, but let's list what's here. So we are not in, you know, we're in a pretty random uh, directory. So let's go ahead and go to the root directory. Let's go to users. We got Bill's directory right here. How about it? It's going to be in his desktop. So we're gonna to go to his desktop and we're gonna find user.txt and we're going to cat it even though it's a Windows box and you can't cat, you need to do more. Uh, but oh, hey, I lied to you. It's it's meterpreter, so you can use that command. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that text flag and move on to privilege escalation. Now what we need to do right here, this is gonna be kind of a tough deal here. And I actually had a lot of issues on this specific box trying to do privesk and it happened with this stupid section basically what we need to do is uh we are going to need to upload power up first not a problem uh, i'm going to go ahead and copy it over to uh my current directory at steel mountain uh, that way i can just upload it from meterpreter and what power up is going to do it's basically it, it's got some PowerShell commands that just help you enumerate your target. Uh, the one that we're going to use is invoke all checks and that's going to show all the current running processes on your target. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this over to the Steel Mountain directory. And as soon as we got that copied over, we're gonna upload it in Meterpreter. You'll see that here in just a moment. We got it copied. It would help if I were uh, sudo for that, of course, duh silly me and then let's go ahead and jump back to where we are doing our work daily bugle spoiler alert just hack that great stuff love it fun awesome let me know in the comment section if you want to see a video on daily bugle or any other walkthroughs just like this uh, i have fun making this i mean it definitely helps me review and learn so let's go and upload powerup.ps1 and then let's go ahead and jump into a PowerShell session. And I fumbled the football on this one. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you upload PowerShell into Meterpreter whenever you do that, because by default, it's not uh, installed. So go ahead and load PowerShell underscore shell. You got it loaded here, and then you'll be able to just go ahead and do PowerShell underscore shell, and that will give you a PowerShell session in your present working directory. And so once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and run powerup.ps1. Basically what that does is it just runs powerup.ps1, it installs the, uh, the different scripts that it has into PowerShell. And then you're gonna go ahead and do invoke all checks. And this is gonna pull up a ton of current running processes that we have currently running on this system. Uh, and we wanna pay close attention to whatever has the unquoted service path vulnerability. What we also want is something that we can restart. And so down here at the bottom, we have three uh, that just kind of stand out. It's just formatting, nothing else. But we want to notice that, okay, this one, look, you can restart it. How great is that? Uh, it looks familiar and that's because we're going to scroll up and we're going to actually see the same one show up. Uh, and this is the process that we are going to, going to go ahead and exploit. Advanced System Care Services 9. And we see here it has unquoted service paths. So what we're going to go ahead and do there, we're going to copy this service and we're going to answer this question and we're going to get credit for that. Now this is where things just plain get stupid. Is I had a hard time. Okay. 
So with that, let's go ahead and make ourselves an MS Venom payload. And basically this is kind of where part one of where things got kind of stupid. All right. Is the first like time that I was running through this, uh, if you read closely on the guide here on try hack me, uh, these screenshots, it basically has you, or it doesn't have you, but they call this, uh, this reverse shell advanced.exe. So me reading it, not quite knowing at the time what I'm doing, I'm thinking like, heck yeah, I'm gonna name it advanced.exe and I'm gonna get my reverse shell and this is gonna be great. Not so. The reason is, is you wanna make sure that your reverse shell is named the same as an executable that is running in whatever service that you are stopping and restarting. The reason that is, is it's going to confuse which executable that it wants that it should run and it might run the uh, reverse shell that you've uploaded under the same name as the legitimate executable uh, whereas if you just upload random executable like advanced exe that may not be referenced anywhere else in the program you might have an issue uh, now it might work for some and if it does let me know in the comments and let me know uh, why because that's interesting uh, but this is just one of the things that I noticed worked for me is I needed to uh, actually name it the same as one of the other executables that's running in this in this folder and we'll get a list uh, once we get to that directory of all the other executables so we've got our reverse shell we're gonna go ahead and move out of our PowerShell session uh, we're gonna go ahead and click this I mean we, it, it doesn't require an answer so we're going to terminate this session let's go ahead and we're going to move into advanced system care uh, advanced system advanced care whatever we're moving into that folder <laughs> and we're going to see all the different executables that are rushed that are running in that folder uh, another note for you is you're going to notice that some of these folders uh, have spaces in the name and so one way that you can circumvent that is by using the backslash uh, in front of the first letter after the space and another thing that you can do is just have the folder name in quotations and that'll help you get into that folder so here we are we're gonna go ahead and list this out and let's see what we have here now we got I'm looking for advanced because I want to make sure <laughs> You know, we just made a payload called advanced.exe, so let's see if that exists. And I'm not seeing it. And so I'm starting to think maybe I should, you know, remake the payload under ascservice.exe. I'm about to get to it. Let me look up. I could, I, so I can use the same string as the last one that I used, but instead of you doing advanced.exe, I'll just do ascservice.exe. And, but that's basically going to do is again, we're going to try to have the system invoke this executable instead of the legitimate one, whenever we restart the service. And that'll give us our escalated privilege shell. It'll be running NT authority system. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so cool. You're going to love it. Great. So we're going to exit out of uh, root because again, we don't want to be running as root all the time. That's super scary. We don't like that gives us the heebie jeebies so let's scroll on down we're gonna upload this in here and you're gonna notice we're gonna run into our first issue and this is part two of my issues with privesk on this particular machine i had a hard time guys i had a hard time i'm being vulnerable I'm telling you i had a hard time okay this is a learning experience i'm learning with all of you guys this is great. So I'm going to try to remove it and see if I can replace it. Of course you can't. You uh, need permissions to do that. And I do not have that. Okay, fine. Whatever. I'll just upload it. Of course you can't because it's still running. So earlier, whenever I typed in, uh, in, in the PowerShell, SC stop, it didn't work. And of course, I'm trying to hear in my interpreter, hey, SC, stop this service. It's not going to work because this is in a interpreter session and SC is a PowerShell or SC is a Windows command. <laughs> I leave it ambiguous. We'll jump into that here in a second. Okay, fine. So I'm going to jump into PowerShell, SC stop, advanced system care service nine. And again, it's not going to give us any output. That's not a good sign. So here I've spent 
like probably an hour trying to figure this out again. You, all you need to do is just type shell and then you go SC stop advanced system care service nine. Unbelievable. I suck at windows guys. So anyway, we stopped the service. We finally get the output showing that it stopped. We're gonna go ahead and terminate that channel. We're gonna upload ASC service.exe. And once it's uploaded, super cool. We're gonna go ahead and jump back into shell. We're gonna SC start it again. And at this point, I don't think I've shown it, but my uh, I got my netcat listener in the back. And here it is. It's pick up the uh, escalated shell. We're gonna run who am I? We are NT authority system. That is exactly what we want to see. So we're gonna go ahead and CD to users. We're gonna see to uh, the administrator's desktop. And once we get to the administrator's de desktop, we are going to see C or uh, excuse me, we're gonna see root.txt. That is our final answer. Wow. And again, I do cat, even though I'm in PowerShell, it's really, you have to type in more if you wanna read a document. So I'm gonna copy and paste this flag down here in the root flag and boom, we have rooted Steel Mountain. So yeah, problems that I had uh, was again, the first problem that I had was, of course, knowing where to use the SC command uh, for, uh, you know, just to stop and start the service. Uh, you need to use that in shell, not PowerShell and not Meterpreter. Uh, and so that would have been helpful for me to know a lot earlier. Uh, it might work if you run, if you put advanced.exe in that directory and then you run this service, it might execute advanced.exe. I'm not sure I haven't tested that. If you test it, let me know down in the comments uh, and I'll be sure to pin your comment. And then, uh, yeah, and th those were kind of the main problems I had here. Uh, it was very frustrating and I learned a lot about how to troubleshoot and research and figure out why the heck something that was supposed to work didn't work but anyway we got it everybody uh let me know now down in the comments if this was helpful like this video if you enjoyed it and check out some of my other videos i'll be doing more like this have a good one